All right, so last year we did a video on the best way to tie your ATV down using nothing more than ratchet straps. And this year, this year I wanna show you the best possible way to tie your ATV down, it, at least in my mind. I'm pretty sure I just said something wet. All right, so the method that I'm talking about is using E-Track. Now, if you've never used E-Track, definitely stick around because E-Track is an amazing, versatile way to tie down your ATVs, side-by-sides, and just a number of other things, especially if you set it up right. And, and if you're like, I know all about E-Track because I've used it or I've seen it, whatever, it's still a good video to watch or at least skip to the end just so you can kind of see really the use and, and how easy it actually is to bring your machine on and tie it down. It's just a, E-Track is a great system. I absolutely love it. All right, so I already know basically where I want the E-Track. So you're gonna wanna figure that out first. In this case, I wanted it pretty far up to the front because I still wanna be able to load a side-by-side -side or for sure, at least another ATV on the back. So make sure you figure that out. And I also knew that I wanted 45 inches between each E-Track. So make sure you figure that out as well. Now, in this case, I measured one of my ATVs. So I knew that if I measured at least 45 inches apart, I would, definitely be able to get my current ATV on there. And for the most part, that's pretty standard. So I would at least be able to get most of the tire onto the E-Track, even with some variation in there. So make sure you take the time to figure out where they're gonna go before you go any further. All right, so the next step here is to measure the actual E-Track. I'm gonna be honest with you, instead of taking the time to do a bunch of measurements, I just laid the E-Track down and put a mark on it where I was gonna make the cut. All right, so I'm not gonna lie to you here. Uh, I did not do this the best possible way you can when it comes to cutting this, okay? I just clamped it down and then I, oh, safety first, don't forget, don't forget them glasses. All right, so I just clamped it down and went ahead and used a Sawzall because I already had a metal blade. Realistically, if you wanted to do this the best way you could, it would be to use a table saw and actually just cut it straight down. Now, I didn't have a metal blade, and in case you didn't know, those are super freaking expensive, so I just went ahead and used my Sawzall. Now, one thing I didn't do here is account for this weld, so I had to take it to the grinder and just take a little bit off. Man, that looks cool on video, doesn't it? We should slow that down. No, you can't even tell those sparks are moving so fast. Anyway, now using a grinder works really well because I was able to take a little bit off like I needed and it just smooths that cut down. Oh, perfect, that is a perfect fit. This, this is gonna look awesome. All right, so, wow, this guy's in the way. Dude, dude, move. What? I wanna be able to show people oh, the cut. my bad, right. here. Wow. This piece is basically already cut off anyway. Sorry. Are you done interrupting? I, I forgot to hit record on that one. Oh my gosh, he's still interrupting. All right, so you don't have to yell though. Oh my gosh, is this guy for real? Fine, done interrupting. All right, so the reason I'm cutting this rubber is because different types of metals often do not go well with each other. So I'm putting a rubber barrier between the aluminum and these galvanized E-tracks. Now, one lesson I did learn here is that if you score it deep enough, you can really just peel it back. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. I already cleaned this off, but again, I'm gonna I'm just gonna kind of get a little bit more gunk off that's fallen and, and just has landed there. So I have a nice clean surface to lay this rubber down before I put the E-Track on top of it. And by the way, I should say this E-Track, this is really nice E-Track and it wasn't overly expensive. I'll put a link in the show notes below so you can, you can check it out online. And also I'm gonna go ahead and put full instructions down there. And I recommend either having those instructions handy or printing them off because while Ace is the place of the helpful hardware folks, I saw them entirely too many times during this project because I kept forgetting something small and had to run back. So don't do what I did. Take the time to print out these instructions or, or, or at least have them available on your phone so that you know what you need the first trip. And again, the link for these instructions will be right below this video. You can click that and it'll take you right to them. So what I'm doing here is there's rivets in the trailer and I'm actually counting those to make sure that this lines up perfectly because if it doesn't line up right, it will drive me nuts for freaking ever. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start drilling these holes. And I gotta say, I didn't realize when I started this that the hardest part of drilling these holes was actually gonna be the rubber layer between the E-Track and the aluminum trailer. Uh, not to mention how freaking hard it was to push the bolts through the E-Track and the rubber. All right, so I'm gonna go to the other side of the trailer, drill another hole, that way I've got one bolt on each side of the E-Track to keep it even. So I realized something as I was drilling these two holes. I just, I drilled the first two holes on opposite sides to use as a placeholder so that I know, I know this won't move while I screw the rest down. However, I have to screw into the frame as well, which I haven't done yet. This drill bit is not long enough, so I'm gonna have to go get a longer drill bit. All right, so I got that drill bit, and now I'm gonna go ahead and drill all these holes out, all right? So I know exactly where I want. When you do this, make sure you get some in the frame, okay? Some of these aren't in the frame, so I'm able to use a shorter bolt, which is why I was able to use that shorter drill bit for some of them. 
but a lot of the other ones, I'm using longer bolts that go all the way through the frame. You wanna make sure you get through your frame or somewhere that's extremely solid to actually fully secure this in well. And because I'm anal, I'm gonna go ahead and get all these aluminum shavings uh, picked up. There's my dog in the background, I guess making another appearance. I still, by the way, I still managed to get one of these aluminum pieces stuck in my finger. So be careful, they're sharp. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and spray each one of these holes. It's a clear spray, but it's it's made by Rust-Oleum. And the reason I'm spraying it in there is because we've now put fresh holes in the aluminum and the E-Track and everywhere else. And it's just gonna help seal that back up again because what I don't want to have happen is these holes to lead to rust later on. So again, I've got the rubber between the metals. I'm gonna put the paint wherever I've made a fresh hole just because I wanna do everything possible to ensure that this does not lead to rust down the road. And then on the E-Track, I made those cuts, so I'm gonna go ahead and spray that. And then where I drill those holes, I actually drilled them just a hair bigger. So again, I'm gonna make sure I spray those holes to, to seal all that back up. All right, so once it dries, we're gonna go ahead and line up the rubber mat and then the E-Track, and we can start bolting this puppy down. Or I don't, I don't know what to say right now. I have nothing to say at this very moment. I just, the silence seems weird. So I'm randomly talking as you watch me put bolts in this thing. I should probably just cut this down. I don't know why I'm still talking. I should cut this down. All right, so as I'm moving to the bottom again, you can see I'm using a nice thick rubber washer, again, to keep metals from touching. And then I'm gonna use a nice thick steel washer. And then I'm gonna put a lock nut on and the nut itself. And I'm gonna do that all the way down. I won't make you watch all those though. Instead of just listening to me mumble, we'll just skip to when it's done. All right, so there we go. The one side totally done. Now, while the paint was drying on that one, I did start on this one, so it's already part way done, but you saw the process. So let's just go ahead and skip to when it's done. All right, so we are done. We got them both in. It took way longer than I expected because soon after uh, I started on this one, of course the rain came, so I had to wait that out, which uh, just took a while. So now comes the greatest part of all. We get to actually test it out. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So I've got some new some new E-Track, uh, ratchet straps here i by the way if i didn't already mention it i'll go ahead and put a link in the show notes below for the e-track and the ratchet straps as well as some actual instructions on how to do this all right so let's go ahead and uh load up a four-wheeler and see how it works <laughs> I truly do believe that this is one of the best possible ways you can tie your machine down. Yeah, it might take you a Saturday to get this all installed or, or set up and looking clean, but it's gonna save you tons of time during loading and unloading and on and off the trail and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's a very secure method to use. So I hope this video was helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already. And, and I'll see you on the trail. Ride day.